Hey, fifth graders, here we are. Save me a seat. Second section, Tuesday. Hamburgers. Tuesday, hamburgers. Chapter 9, Ravi. I lay out my math notebook, which Amma and I have carefully covered with brown paper. The label is neat cursive, and it says, Ravi Suryanarayi. Boy, that's a tricky one for me. Suryanarayanan, grade five, Albert Einstein Elementary School, mathematics. It's my mother's handwriting. We went to Staples together last week to buy all my school supplies, but she insisted on writing out the labels herself. Even Parima has to admit that Amma's handwriting is beautiful. Your book is the first thing your teacher will notice, Ravi, Amma told me as she carefully wrote my name on one of the smooth white labels. First impressions matter. Now, sitting at my desk, I run my hand over my math notebook and smile. In India, I was the winner of the math Olympiad three years in a row. I know all my multiplication tables till, till 20. Appa is right, there's nothing wrong with showing off a little. I am sure that after this morning, Mrs. Beam will realize what kind of student I really am, and the silly business about Miss Frost and special help will be over. I place my new pencil box next to the notebook. Amma made sure that every item on the school supplies list was bought. Three mechanical pencils, two erasers, a six-inch ruler, two highlighters, four ruled notebooks, and a pack of 3M post-its. I keep looking over at Mrs. Beam, but I don't think that she has noticed yet how well prepared I am. She's busy writing on the whiteboard. In India, we only had blackboards. I loved the soft scraping noise the chalk made and the smell of the dusty erasers. The desk in front of me is empty. I wonder if Dylan Samreem will be absent today, but at the last minute he comes rushing into class and takes his seat. I'm glad my new friend is going to be here to witness what's about to happen. I'm sure he will be impressed. Let's do a quick review, Mrs. Beam announces. Easy peasy, I think, when I see the math problems Mrs. Beam has written on the board. Is this what fifth graders in America are doing? I was expecting something much harder, like maybe order of operations or something to do with decimals and fractions. The big guy who sits behind me is groaning and moaning. I turn around to see what's wrong with him and notice his name card for the first time. Joe Sylvester. As I'm reading his name, Joe Sylvester suddenly looks up. I smile, but he doesn't smile back. I can't believe kids in America are allowed to come to school looking like him. In India, we had to wear uniforms with dress pants, a collared shirt, and a tie. Joe Sylvester has on tracksuit pants and an unironed t-shirt. I face front again and straighten my back. Good posture is also on Amma's list of ways to make a good first impression. Joe Sylvester is slouching in his chair. Who would like to come up and show us how to solve the first problem, Mrs. Beam asks the class. I push up my glasses, take a deep breath, and raise my hand. Chapter 10, Joe. Please don't call on me, please don't call on me, please don't call on me, I think but I can feel Mrs. Beam's head turning my way. I groan. I have a feeling I know where this is heading. I sure hope Miss Frost remembered to tell Mrs. Beam about the APD. Nobody knew anything was wrong with me until I started school. The first week of kindergarten, I spent most of my time hiding in the coat closet with my hands over my ears. My teacher, Miss Kane, thought I was homesick, but that wasn't it at all. I didn't want to go home. I just couldn't handle the noise. It turns out I have something called APD, which stands for Auditory Processing Disorder, and means I have trouble listening. I'm not deaf, I can hear just fine. In fact, in a way, the problem is that my hearing is too good, which is why I go to Miss Frost. She gives me exercises to help my ears and my brain agree about what to listen to and what to tune out. She also has M&Ms in her office, peanut ones, and she lets me eat as many as I want. Miss Frost understands what's going on, but pretty much nobody else does. They don't understand how hard it is for me to follow directions when the electric pencil sharpener is going, or the door keeps slamming, 
or I'm worrying about whether someone is about to sneak up behind me and do something mean. They also don't understand how much I hate to be put on the spot, like when a teacher calls on me. As Mrs. Beam turns my way, I slide down in my seat. Even if she knows about my APD, it doesn't mean I'm safe. Sometimes teachers think they're doing you a favor by treating you like you're no different from anyone else. The thing is, I am different. I slide down even farther in my seat, as low as I can go without falling out. All I care about is not getting called on. It's not that I can't do math. Actually, I'm pretty good at it. But standing up in front of the class makes me nervous. And when I get nervous, I forget what I'm doing and make mistakes. It turns out today is my lucky day, though, because the new kid shoots his hands straight up in the air like an arrow. He's wearing another white polo shirt buttoned all the way up. Even the sleeves have been ironed flat. They're stiff and stick out funny like little wings. His desk is covered with a bunch of junk, including some shiny new mechanical pencils, which Dylan keeps eyeballing with a klepto gleam. Mrs. Beam looks right at me. At least, I think she's looking at me. But then she calls on the new kid instead. That was close. And that's the end of chapter 10. And tomorrow we'll pick up with chapter 11.